Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jack, and there are my team members, Wendy, Elsa, Jay, and Louis. Speaking of cultural dialogue between the United States and Taiwan, we are going to talk about the differences in education. First, let's take a look at the educational states. You can clearly see that in America, uh, there are only five grades in elementary school. And in Taiwan, there are six grades in elementary school. So they are also different as the rest of the state. Among these educational states, our group are focusing on senior high school. And we'll talk about course choosing, class size, and extracurriculum activities. So let's welcome Wendy to talk about course choosing. Um, in Taiwan, a senior high school student must arrive to school at 7.30 and uh, they will have eight curriculum in a day. That is to say, they have curriculum until 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And, uh, in this timetable, we can see that they have they have main subjects like Chinese, Mathematics, English, and uh, all courses are organized by the school. Relatively, in American, senior high school students can choose their courses by their own. They can they have some several choices to choose in optional curriculum, like like ten, technical and the vocational curriculum. Furthermore, they will end the curriculum before three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, it means that they will have more time than Taiwanese students after class and. Uh, they will join other extracurricular after class. Uh, what what extracurricular can they join? Uh, we will report the part later. And the following part is class size part. Let's welcome Elsa. about the class size of senior high school. Generally, America is classified as small class size. The student number is around 10, and like this, as you can see. And they emphasize on um, ed, um, personal education. Um, it, it means that students can get much more resource. On the other hand, Taiwan is big class size. Mm, they are more competitive, but uh, the rank, the gap between allotype and our privilege is large. That is, um, students um, resource distribute unevenly to uh, each uh, each one, and the government of often distributes the resource unevenly. Mm, and you may think that. This problem is happen. Uh, this problem happens on Asia countries, but no, um, America pays no child left behind. Uh, um, uh, in twenty o two, and uh, unfortunately, it failed. So the problem is exists on Asia country and America. We should figure out this problem and do our best. And then Jay will introduce you extracurricular activities. Okay. Okay. Finally, the, cl the class is in. Okay. I can. I first I have to ask everybody a question. 
if you ever go to cram school in your senior high school student life, please raise your hand. Go to cram school. Okay, see, almost all of students in Taiwan have to go to cram school to practice school lessons and and learn the skills to get higher score. But in America, they don't have to take so much time to study. So they can do what they really want in their spare time. And most of them will choose to join school sports team. In Taiwan, when it comes to the school sports team, they will think about training all day and do not have time for study. But in America, their school sports time training won't invade the regular class time. So they can find a balance between school lessons and sports career. That's why there are some professional athletes in, Amer in America can have an excellent study background, such as Mike Mussina, a pitcher in the Major League Baseball. He's graduated from Stanford. And Jeremy Lin, he knows to say, the most famous Adrian best, best keyboard player now. He's graduated from Harvard, and both of them are majoring economics. Okay, then Louis will lead to a conclusion. Hi. 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 Now I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of American teacher methods and Taiwanese teacher methods. Generally, Chinese students have more tests than American students have. Taking tests is a double-edged sword, however, it has some benefits like it enables teachers to understand the student's knowledge level. Some studies also show that taking tests can help students learn more effectively, but having too many tests can always put a lot of pressure on Chinese students. Sometimes, Students even devour and thus fail to understand the real meaning of the things they learn in class. And in Chinese, that's called Kenya Si Jiao Yu. American students also have enjoyed more freedom. They can decide how to spend their time freely. While well, most Taiwanese parents always force their children to study from day to night. American students may be more independent, but they may spend less time studying. According, according to a survey, most American students spend less than 20 hours per week in their studies. They may have a poor academic performance and they may have a risk to lose their interest in their studies. There is a perfect education system that suits both American students and Chinese students. We cannot just copy American teaching methods when we try to reform our education system. Instead, we should know what our students really need when we are trying to reform our education system. That's all for our group's presentation. Thank you.